Hi guys, it's Anthony with AJK Beauty back here with another video. Um, so I have been meaning to do a daytime um, get ready with me video for quite some time, um, but I always run into the situation where I don't have time before I'm headed to the office or even on the weekends I'm usually doing a hike or doing something like that in the morning so it, I just never have the time to kind of um, video or film my full morning routine. I'm usually just slapping it on and then off I go. Um, so I actually got off work a little while ago, um, but I am going out with some friends this evening just for dinner and figured I was going to rinse off anyway just to kind of get the day off me and uh, put some fresh product on. So I figured might as well just um, hop in the shower, rinse off, wash my hair, shave, and then um, and just go through my morning routine. So, um, cause that's what I was kind of, kind of do anyway. Uh, maybe not to this extent, but I'm going to just do my full morning routine with you guys. So, um, I already shaved, got all that set. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, do my water-based cleanser. And, um, so I figure I'll just go through each step with you guys. I might jump around as I actually do like the washing and stuff, just so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Um, a lot of these products, um, or a couple of them you might've seen in my get unready video with me because, um, because it's all kind of the same stuff. Sorry, I have like water still from, from shaving. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of it is the same, the same products again, just used for my morning routine. Um, but there are some, different ones and I've cha obviously changed up some of the products like I'm using some new things now so um it might some of it might might be new and then later on in June a couple weeks into June I'll probably do a new get unready video with me because my products tend to turn over every month or two months so there are some new things here um but let's start with the water-based cleanser um let me grab it because it's still in the shower from when i wa um, washed my face last so um i'm still using the lotus um this is all going to be flipped backwards because i basically have one of those like car mounted suctiony cup things to my mirror and so i have to use the front facing camera so i can see what's going on or with, with just the way i have it mounted i have to do it this way so i do apologize um, this is the lotus pure jeju island jeju botanical ph balancing cleanser i haven't done a full review on this one but i am i think it'll be three weeks this this week it's been three weeks so i'm coming up on a month with it um, but I, I really do love this so far. It's not my absolute favorite cleanser I've ever used, but it's pretty close. Um, it, and you only have to use one, like I just use one pump and it foams really well for a pH balanced cleanser. So I'm only down to like here on it after almost a month. So you probably get like four months out of one bottle, which is awesome. So, um, it comes out in, I guess I'll just do it like this so you can see it. Um, it comes out in this like... Um, just like gel based consistency. You only need a single pump of product and then it just foams up really nicely um, So I just get some water going. I also have a whip maker. I don't know if you guys have seen those um, But it's a, a foam maker, but we're just gonna use our hands for this um, and then Yeah, it just it has a really light floral kind of citrusy scent I might have talked about this in my get unready video because I had just started using it then, um, but just has like a nice light florally citrus scent, but the foam that it, that it creates is really nice and rather long lasting for a gel based pH balance cleanser. So I'm just going to do this for a couple minutes. Um, my last video, I talked a little bit about kind of my history with K-Beauty and skincare while I was doing the scrubbing and the washing, but I'm just going to zoom through it this time because we kind of already had a little chat about that. Um, so yeah, let me, um, let me finish doing this. I'm going to stop talking and I'll just kind of fast forward and then we'll, um, we'll get on with the next steps. Okay, great. Okay, so that's all done. Uh, face is all nice and washed. Um, I just patted it dry, um, but sometimes I'll just not even do that if 
you know, if I've got a couple minutes from the time I washed my face, um, at least in my night routine, after I've washed my face, then if I've got a couple minutes, then um, I'll just let it kind of air dry and then move right into my toner um, because I've heard that drying your face with a towel can be kind of, it, it just sucks out a lot of moisture that could have potentially been imparted into your skin. Um, but just for the sake of time, I just did a light pat. So it's still kind of a little bit damp, but anyway. Um, so right now with my daytime routine, I have actually been um, doing quite a, I've been incorporating an acid product actually a couple of them into my morning routine, um, just because even though I've really made a lot of progress with my skin in regards to uh, lightening dark spots and hyperpigmentation and just the general like kind of um, texture and tone to my skin um, has been really improving since I started K-Beauty. If you get really up close and get really personal with it, you can see that I still have a lot of um, clogged pores, a lot of excess sebum and that's just due to probably general dehydration and just I, in years and years of just not taking care of my skin and just letting a ton of dead skin cells build up um, and excess sebum so I think a lot of that's just trapped in there and it's been trapped for so long so like kind of if I like stretch my my cheeks out and get really up close I won't do it because I still a little self-conscious about it but um, if I get really up close oh we might as well um so yeah, you can still see like all of those little clog pores. There's just a bajillion of them there. You can see them really well there. Um, so yeah, just in my cheek area and even on my chin, you can see them here. Anyway, so I've been struggling with that since like I was in my teens and they have meant like not been as prevalent or as noticeable since starting K-Beauty, but you can still see like every pore has just a little teensy bit of something going on in there. And I know having sebum in your skin is just a natural thing, but I'd like it to just be a little bit more clear, a little bit more even. Um, especially on hot days or if I'm feeling a little bit oily, they tend to really stand out. And if I'm wearing makeup and it gets hot, you can see it just, it kind of turns into a bit of a mess. So. I decided to kind of kick it up a notch with the acids just to see if um, it's something my skin could handle. When I first started K-Beauty, I kind of went a little bit nuts with the acids in my um, kind of like lipid layer or my moisture barrier was already kind of compromised or just wasn't really healthy in general. So I went to town with these acids and that's the first time that I ever really felt an overexfoliation where my skin just kind of hurt to the touch and even using like a really gentle cleanser. I think at the time I was using the Neogen um, green tea foaming cleanser that has like the little bits of green tea at the bottom. Even something like that um, was just like, it hadn't hurt, it hadn't irritated my skin at all, but once I had over exfoliated, I'd go to like do a gentle cleanse and my skin would just burn. So I knew I had compromised my skin. And so after that, I kind of leaned off of like the heavier acids other than like a once a week AHA, BHA peeling fluid, like the ones from the ordinary peach and lily drunk elephant, just like a once a week, once every other week. And even those, I play with them. So I'll use them for like two weeks in a row and then my skin's feeling pretty good. So I won't come back to them for like a, a few weeks or a month at a time. Um, but now that I'm really trying to address the, the clogged pore issues and just have more consistently clear pores, even after I would do like an extraction, like a week later I'd come back and it was just little sebum-y snakes everywhere again, like it was just constant. So I have been trying to drink more water, um, kind of take care of my skin on, in that sense, but I've incorporated some new acid products. So the one that, to say all that basically means here's the products that I'm using in the morning. Um, so in the morning, I am now using the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. So um, I decided to choose to do um, a stronger BHA liquid in the morning because even though it can cause some sensitivity to your skin because it's an acid product, BHAs, uh, from what I've read, tend to work it in the inner layers of the skin go into the pore because they're oil soluble. So there's less of a chance of them causing uh, photosensitivity um, compared to an AHA, which works on resurfacing the outermost layers of the skin. So um, they're still potentially irritating um, 
So you always want to wear sunscreen anytime you're using acid products in the AM, but I picked the BHA for my AM because just from what I've read, that might be a, a safer option, but still you want to play it safe. Tons of sunscreen when you are using acid products in your morning routine. So I'm just going to grab a, um, a cotton pad here and um, I'm going to grab a couple of them actually. And um, I'm just going to put a couple drops of the product right onto the cotton pad, like so. Um, and then I'm just going to go over one side of my face with the cotton round or cotton pad. You don't want to get right up into the eye area. You just kind of want to hit that cheekbone. And then I just basically do eyebrow. Um, and then I just bring that down, get in all the little creases and crevices. And then I bring it down just to like bottom jawline start of the neck because I have some hyperpigmentation there. So I, I bring my acids down that far. There's this one spot for, of hyperpigmentation that I usually don't get to because the I think the, the pore density on your, the skin on your neck is not as, I guess, it, I don't know. It's just from what I was reading, it, there's not as many of them or the, the makeup of the skin there on the neck isn't really receptive to a ton of acid products or a lot of skincare in general. Um, so I don't go like down here with a lot of products, especially acids. I try to keep it like right to where I have that hyperpigmentation, but this one little guy is just outside the boundary. I, I can't quite get to him, but I do put a little vitamin C down there to be honest. So anyway, so once I've done that, I'm gonna grab a second cotton round, do the same thing just on the other side of the face. So. We're just gonna swipe, swipe, swipe. Bringing that right down and around. And so I've noticed that this BHA um, fluid, or I guess I'm using it as a, as a first step toner almost, um, it really does with the cotton round take off a lot of um, excess um, dead skin and even though it's a BHA and it's working deeper, I think just that action with the physical action with the cotton pad really does take off a lot of dead skin. And when I look at the pad, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my cleanser just, my cleanser is very gentle and that's what it's supposed to do is just get off surface dirt, but I'm always kind of shocked. Um, and then after I'm done with the, using the pads, I'll just take just a couple more drops right into the palm of my hand and just work that into those areas that I am most concerned about. So kind of that cheek and nose area and then a little bit on the chin. So not too crazy, just some light pressure. And then I kind of work, go up and move up. And I feel like that really helps it to absorb and then just kind of pat that excess in. So that's not a step that you have to do, um, but I just do that just to make sure that I did get a nice layer of product. So once I do that, depending on my schedule in the morning, I like to leave my, my BHA fluid alone as is for just about like 30 to 60 seconds, just so it has some time to really fully absorb it as much as it can in that time. Of course, with the morning routine, it's not like, okay, well, I'm going to just sit here for 20 minutes. It, I don't have, that's not my schedule. So 30 to 60 seconds is really all I have. So, um, I'm just going to call that good. Just note that this is where I would take 30 to 60 seconds just to maybe like run a comb through my hair or whatever else in my morning routine and move on. Um, but that's where that pause will be. We're just going to keep moving right along. Um, I honestly don't think you need that wait time. Um, at least not on, on Paula's instructions. It's not like, now let it sit for a few minutes. It, you, I think you can just move right along. So the next step in my morning routine, since that BHA liquid exfoliant, isn't necessarily a super hydrating product and I like a lot of hydration in my morning routine, I come back through with just a couple skins or layers of a hydrating toner. I have this little sample of the Huamisa Organic Flowers um, toner, the deep rich toner. And then once that's done, I have a sample of the Laneige um, Essential Power Skin Toner. I'm just trying to get through these deluxe sample sizes because I have a whole big bag of them. And then from there, I'm hoping that'll help me to decide which ones I'm interested in making uh, full product purchases of and doing reviews of. So I'm um, just about two thirds of the way through 
this uh, Vamisa toner. So just a couple, a few drops in the hand and then just some, just light pouting just to pat that product into the skin. And once I, when, once again, I just kind of go right to like that underneath jawline area. I don't bring it all the way down. Um, at least when I'm being conscious of my steps. Sometimes there's mornings where I'm just like, uh, uh, I gotta get out of here. Um, so I'll do that two to three times, just depending on my current skin condition. If I'm feeling really parched and dehydrated or it's been really hot out, then I like to give my skin as much moisture in the morning. That way I'm not looking like an oily mess because my skin responds to the heat and the dryness by producing a lot of oil. So um, yeah, so if I give it some hydration up front, then I can usually make it through the day without kind of looking all oil slicky. So I'm going to go with three layers. Like I said, I'm meeting some friends, so I want to be all glowing. <laughs> so yeah, just just some nice padding, a little bit of pressure. Just, I don't do a lot of like this. Um, I just kind of pat it in until it feels like it's fully absorbed. And I like, I kind of know when my skin has gotten enough product when I get that, like, I don't know if you can hear that, but that kind of dewy, like, it's, all, it's a stickiness, but it's not sticky. Um, it's just that kind of like dewy feel that lets me know that my skin's kind of had just enough product. So that's that for the toner. Moving on, a uh, brightening essence um, or an essence. I've used some that aren't, aren't um, based on fermented ingredients, haven't been as much of a fan as the ones that do contain um, fermented ingredients. Right now I'm using the um, Neogen Real Ferment Micro Essence, which contains 93% fermented ingredients or fermented complex. And I love, I just love this stuff. I, I'm once again, I think I'm coming up on a month with it. I might be about a week and a half away from hitting a month mark with it. And it reminds me a lot of the, um, as far as what it does, it reminds me kind of the, of the Misha Time Revolution First Treatment Essence in that it really is helping to just brighten my general skin tone, create a more even and uniform skin tone. So kind of reducing the appearance of the hyperpigmentation in dark spots. And it just imparts a lot of nice light hydration too. And, um, I sometimes will use it before the toner or after. I really don't subscribe to the, you know, first treatment must go first kind of thing. I mean, your skin is going to absorb these ingredients and use them in the way that it's going to use them. And when you're talking about really thin consistencies, regardless, it, your skin's not going to be like, whoa, 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 that bottle said FT on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not going to use this. I mean... I don't know, everyone has their own opinion on that, but if I grab my toner by accident before my first treatment essence, it's not the end of the world. And if I, you know, if I use a slightly heavier, like that Wamisa toner is a little bit heavier. If I use that before a lighter toner or lighter essence, like whoop de doo I, I don't know. That's, I get that the steps are in order based on, I guess, like most fluid to heaviest, but I even know people that will put a facial oil on before their like toners and stuff and they, they say they love it. So it's all about, I think, per personal preference and what you're most comfortable with. Your skin's going to eat it all up anyway. And in my opinion, I, d I don't know the science behind that, but I just am not that picky when it comes to essences before toners, before serums. As long as your sunscreen's going on at the end, then you are, you're good. Um, okay, so now we're going to just jump into a couple serums that I've been using. Um, I, of course, am going to be throwing on some Glow Recipe uh, Pineapple Seed Bright Serum. And then this new one that I've been using, I, don't, I hope you can see that. I don't know if that works on the front-facing camera. Obviously not. Um, it is a Pure Gen Multi Collagen um, Power Lifting Serum. This is one that I got from my Face Story uh, Lux Plus subscription box. And so I we'll do just a little combo of these two. Um, I haven't really been that sold on collagen products in the past from like sheet masks, but this collagen serum really does seem to over the first, I've been using it for 
couple weeks now, I think. And after the first like week, I did notice that my cheeks were just feeling a little bit more like, you know, that dewiness that you get after using a sheet mask. It almost felt like that, but mm, like that, that feeling stays with my skin longer. Like I feel like I'm building uh, on top of it and kind of creating a cumulative result as opposed to like after a day with, you know, or even a few hours after getting one of those plumping sheet masks, everything kind of settles back down to normal. So I, I do like this collagen um, serum and I had, I wasn't really familiar with the brand Puregen. And I love that. I, I talk about how Face Story brings a lot of uncommon brands over to the U.S. And this is one of them that I see, it seems like is pretty, not that common, um, Korean brand to find in the U.S. So just a couple drops of that. I usually do about three, three to four. And then the same with the, um, the Glow Recipe Pineapple Sea Bright Serum, just about three drops of that. Um, I love the velvet feel. You guys know how much I love the Pineapple Sea Bright Serum. I love the velvet feel. I love how hydrating and glow inducing, like immediately it's just you get that kind of like radiance from it just from one like swipe of it. I love this stuff. Um, and I use it morning and night. A lot of people, once again, because vitamin C is an acid and it can cause some photosensitivity, you really want to use sunscreen during the day. And I've heard a lot of people that actually warn against using vitamin C products during the day. But from my what I've been reading and what I've been hearing is... You know, aside from the brightening effect from vitamin C, this also has lactic acid in it, so you want to be careful. Um, how it works as an antioxidant is, um, at least from what I've heard, once again, comment to correct me, um, is so you have your happy little skin cell, and then you have your free radical, right? And so your free radicals out there in the environment from like pollutants or UV um, or from sunlight, I guess. And so that comes into the skin and attacks the healthy cell and creates an unhealthy cell. And that's what leads to different um, skin diseases, those types of things. And so what the antioxidant found in vitamin C or in other products does is it can work to reverse that damage that's done from the, re the free radical interacting with your skin cell. But from what I'm hearing is it's more effective is it as an interceptor. So at the time that that free radical enters your skin environment or your body, um, the antioxidant does a better job of creating a wall in front of that healthy cell um, to intercept that and keep the free radical from uh, negatively affecting the cell in the first place. So um, that's why I've heard that vitamin C serums are actually better to use in the AM prior to your sunscreen, prior to sun exposure. That way it has a chance to have already created those walls in front of your cells um, before that damage is ever done because from what I'm hearing that it's more effective in that purpose as opposed to coming in after the fact in your PM after you spent you know time outside trying to reverse the damage that's already been done. That's the most dumbed down version I'm sure anyone's ever heard of how that works, but I'm hoping I got it right. And um, that's why I've decided to move my, well, I mean, I'm not moving it. That's why I'm deciding to use it both AM and PM. I'm just about out. I probably got one or two days left of this, which is like the saddest thing in the world, but I'm excited because I'm going to be um, finishing my bottle of Coserex Triple C Lightning Liquid that I have in the fridge before that oxidizes. And then I'm going to be moving on to the Neogen Vita C, um, what is it, lemon powder, powder lemon, the, the vitamin C powder from Neogen that just came out recently. So I'm going to be incorporating that into my morning routine, probably mixing it with my serum. So I'm excited to try that process. Anyway, um, so we've got our exfoliation or wa um, water-based cleanser, tone um, exfoliating fluid, toner, essence, our couple of serums. I'm going to throw on some eye cream and I'm still using the Huamisa by Glow Studio or Glow Recipe, depending on what packaging you have, um, chai tea eye cream. Um, when I first started using this product, I wasn't applying eye creams right in general. And I just did, hit a month or a little over a month with this product and did my review. And before I had learned how to properly apply my eye cream, I wasn't the biggest fan of this product 
or any eye creams in general. I just didn't feel them to be that effective. Um, but now that I've kind of learned how to do it, so you want to use this fourth finger, the one next to your pinky finger or baby finger, and then you want to, oh, this is going to be tough. I'm going to look right in the mirror. Sorry, guys. Um, you're going to go one, two, three, bring it up to the temple. One, two, three, four. So uh, that's a little off, but a little bit on the eyelid, a little bit above the eyebrow, and then those those dots right there going up into the temple. So you're almost creating a little eye mask. And then you're gonna repeat that process on the other side. Um, I'll show you what I was doing before. I was taking the teensiest amount of product and just going, eh, like, oh, maybe a little bit more. I was like, there we go, we're all done here. Cause I just, I didn't, I felt like sometimes eye creams are really heavy. So it might depend on the product too, but this product from um, La Mesa and Glow Recipe is really lightweight considering how much hydration and kind of plumping it does, it's this really nice consistency. So you're gonna take the, the fourth finger because that's your weakest finger in your hand. It, it's, it can't apply that much pressure. And then you just wanna do some light dabbing just right up to the temple and then bringing that down. And then you're gonna come back around and get those eye, or above the eye areas, so the eyelid and the eyebrow. So you're just gonna do that Gently tap it in until that product is, um, sorry, I keep not looking at you guys, but I've got, trying to, <laughs> trying to focus. Um, so you just want to get that until it's fully absorbed. I, because, I don't know if it's because my fingers are larger, I end up spreading it down to almost the top of my cheekbones, but I don't mind that. Um, especially with this eye cream because it focuses on a lot of natural ingredients. Um, you've got, um... Rubios leaf extract, you've got, um, I think there's, I don't know if there's green tea in here, I forget. There's another tea extract in here. You've got turmeric, you've got licorice root, um, just a lot of kind of traditional medicinal and herbal ingredients. And I just feel like even after using it and then a couple minutes later, my natural bags that will never go away are kind of firmed up a little bit and my eyes just have this more refreshed, like awake look, which is perfect when you haven't gotten enough sleep or just mornings in general, it just kind of brightens your eye area and just makes you look a little bit more revitalized. And so I went from not liking this eye cream that much to really loving it because I think I just wasn't using it properly. And it's chock full of antioxidants. It's a really, really good um, eye cream. And I think it's $26 on the Glow Recipe site. Um, you can always check out my review on this, ajkbeauty.wordpress.com. So, okay, eye cream's done. Next thing we're gonna do is just throw some moisturizer on. I'm gonna give you two options here and then I'm gonna go with the second one um, because it's, it's moisturizer plus something else that I'm excited to talk to you guys about and then obviously sunscreen, we'll get there too. All right, so I would, on days that I'm not going to meet anyone, it's just a normal headed to the office, I usually just go with my normal moisturizer. Right now I'm using the Aromatica Tea Tree Balancing Emulsion. Check out my Get Unready review with me because I do talk a little bit about this product. Um, it's a really nice lightweight emulsion, but it also has tea tree extract, which I think is the first ingredient in here. Yeah. Um, so rather than being a tea tree leaf oil, it's the extract. So I think that's a little bit more water-based. So this is just a really light emulsion that provides a lot of antibacterial properties, which is really, really nice. Um, I also like it because it helps to give my skin not necessarily that glow, but more of like just kind of that healthy dewy finish. Um, but I don't see a ton of long lasting hydration out of it. Um, there's just a little bit missing for me in the sense of like being able to just like water bomb my skin with this. It's very light hydration, which could be ideal for people with super oily skin. But I find that if I use this, I either need to apply another layer of it at some point during the day, or I just rely a little bit more on my facial mist. But overall, a really great product for oily, acne-prone skin because it has um, antibacterial ingredients and it's lightly hydrating, so that's really great. Um, so yeah, um, then I wanted to talk a little bit about the other hydrator that I have in my routine and the additional product that I usually put along with it. So. Um, those are going to be the Peach Slices Starlit Glow Highlighting Moisturizer Strawberry Plus Collagen. And then I mix that 
with the Drunk Elephant Debronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine, Sunshine Drops. So these are my going out, want a little bit of something extra on my skin as opposed to just my moisturizer and sunscreen. Um, I go with this moisturizing serum combo and then the sunscreen. Um, so these two products have been excellent. I've been using this one for months and then I've just started using this one I think a couple weeks ago when I went to Turkey or when I went to Istanbul is when I started using it. And I, I, for me and the fact that I just really want, I wanted light coverage from my makeup. I never wanted like tons of full coverage. I have actually stepped away from using BB cushions and the little bit of concealer I was using in favor of this combo because I just didn't want a lot. And I found that there's so many compromises that you have to make and I get it with makeup as far as like sunscreen reapplication and making sure that this is touched up and blending this and I don't know for me in my lifestyle I, I liked using makeup for the few months that I did and ha like um, hats off to people that come up with amazing looks and can keep that that really nice um, makeup base going all day but I just don't have the creativity and I just I'm the type of person that when I wanted to go reapply my sunscreen, I'd just go wash off all my makeup and start all over again because I just didn't, I don't know. I, I just had a tough time with makeup application. I don't think that's where my heart is at either. As far as my passion, it's more about skincare. So these two products really came in handy. Um, I haven't done a full review of this, obviously. I have done one on the sunshine drop, so check that out on the blog. Um, but what I do, I'll just get right to it so we can move on. But what I do is I just put like an almond size, kind of a fat almond size of that moisturizer on my hand. And then I come in with the D bronzy and I usually do just one pump, sometimes one in like a quarter, just depending of those two products together. And then I mix them up. And the D bronzy has a platinum extract or platinum, some sort of platinum peptide. And then cocoa to provide that tint so the less you use the less of a tint you're going to have so this can work for a variety of skin types i've heard a lot of people say that it turns them kind of orangey which i i get but for my my skin tone it really does work well and you just have to be cautious of how much you use it like one one pump just over one pump is perfect for my skin tone um the Starlit Glow Moisturizer has um, strawberry extract, it has collagen, but it has this, um, it, I, it has diamond powder in it. I don't know what that if that's what causes it, but it has this like luminescence to it, um, this kind of pearlescence that almost makes it look kind of like a highlighter product, but not super intense and it doesn't have like coverage necessarily. So I just go and I kind of, you know, swipe it off my hand as I go and just kind of do it on my forehead, nose, each cheek. This is not super, super specific. Um, and then just a little bit on each side of my neck. And then I just go in and massage that product in to try to get as even of a layer as I can. And so it doesn't give it much coverage, if any. It's more of using that cocoa powder just to adjust the skin tone and make it look a little bit more uniform and even. And then it creates a pretty decent um, iridescent yet kind of like soft focus I guess glow um, on the skin um, they say on the in instructions for the starlit glow moisturizer that you can just use it on your cheeks or areas that you want like a highlight I do it everywhere because I figure I think once I mix it with the D bronzy it's not so noticeable and on those with lighter skin tones it actually can come off a little pink I tried it, or one of my friends tried it on her hand, and it looked like really pink. She's very fair skin. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know that it had that kind of pink hue to it. Um, because for me, that just kind of blends in and just kind of gives it just more of a warmer tone, I think, plus the deep bronzy. So I don't think you can notice that on camera, but I mean, you can see that my skin does have more of that intense glow, and that's kind of the ideal look for me. It does calm down just a little bit after a couple minutes. And without these these lights obviously it's not that intense but I like that uniform glow that it provides it's almost like I just took off a sheet mask and then the D bronzy comes in 
and provides a lot of antioxidant power, which I love. It's not really a cosmetic ingredient in the sense that it's makeup. It's more of a skincare ingredient that has cocoa powder as its um, as its like colorant. Um, I'll just use, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like just pure because I um, a lot of people even like on the drunk elephant. Facebook group that I belong to, this is the least popular for a lot of people because you can see how it almost would come off orange to certain skin tones. So that's why I use that moisturizer just to kind of break that up a little bit, but it gives us really nice kind of radiance. Um, I love it. Um, and it, and for my skin tone, you can see it just kind of melts in and like just gives that really nice glow. So these two products together, I have been using this instead of makeup. If you've been watching the past couple of my unboxing videos and sheet mask review videos, it's no makeup, it's just this combo. And this you can pick up at CVS um, and on the Peach Slices site for like 10 bucks, I think. This is a little bit more pricier. I think it's in the $30 range, $32 range. But this has lasted me a long time. I started using it in February and I still have plenty to go. So I love this stuff. This is going to be a forever in my routine and probably this as what I use as make makeup. But now I'm getting hydration, I'm getting collagen, I'm getting antioxidant power from my makeup. So I know a lot of you are like, okay, that's <laughs> that's that's not even close to what I would need. And I totally get that. But I think just with what I, what I was trying to get out of a makeup product, this is kind of doing that. And now I have a lot less fuss in my routine. So... Um, I'm going to go grab my sunscreen just to show you guys what I use. It's in my travel bag right now. Um, I'm going to go grab that, show you what it is, apply it real quick, and then we are done. So hold tight. Okay. Hi. <laughs> so um, I brought two of them because I'm, I'm using two different products just depending on the situation. Um, so I'm just going to run through them real quick. One of them I've already discussed in a previous sunscreen video. So I'm only going to talk about it briefly, but this is the one I'm going to put on right now. It's the Make Prem UV Defense Me Capsule Sun um, Gel. It's SPF 50 plus PA plus plus plus. Um, it is this really gorgeous um, sunscreen serum. So you can see that it looks creamy just in camera, but if you get a closer look, it's almost like a clear gel that has little bits of like hydrating ingredients. And you can see it just it uh, massages down to a completely like clear gel with like zero white cast. We're done. It's on. Um, so I just love this product. It's my favorite sunscreen and, and there hasn't been anything that beats it completely. A lot of them get close like cream sunscreens that have minimal white cast, but this is the only one that literally has zero white cast from the get go and just feels so nourishing, doesn't feel oily or greasy. And it has a lot of skincare benefits to it as well. I think there's hyaluronic acid in here. So you're gonna get some hydrating ingredients. It's got a really pleasant, mildly floral scent, um, but nothing too intense or that lingers. And I find that because it's that clear gel, when I put it over that de-bronzy um, starlight glow combo, it doesn't, it doesn't move or migrate that stuff around. Um, also that Z because it's more of a skincare fluid as opposed to a cosmetic ingredient, it absorbs, like it's not just sitting on the surface. So you can blow your nose and eat and, you know, whatever you got to do and rarely ever will I see it come off. And then when I go to do my oil cleanse at night, it's not like, oh, like, you know, like with your foundation or with your makeup, you see all that pigment just like pouring off your face. You won't really see anything come off your face after using D bronzy because all of that stuff is nourishing ingredients that your skin will actually eat up and, and enjoy. So I, I love that product. I think that's the best thing from Drunk Elephant's line and a lot of people don't like it. And I'm like, good, because then it won't be out of stock when I go to pick up another one. Um, all right. So that's the sunscreen that I use right now. I love that. Wait a few minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes, head out the door. Um, if I'm outside already, if I'm like going on a hike or doing something like that, then I'll bring along with me the Kate Somerville SPF 50 Uncomplicated um, Sunscreen Soft Focus Makeup Setting Spray. Um, this has a lot of mixed reviews. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a full review on it. Um, maybe I'll do, I, I have already written it up. I just need to post it. Um, maybe I'll do it in conjunction with a video review next week, but... For what this does um, as a 
SPF that can be put over makeup. It's one of the better ones out there because it's an aerosol or like a pressurized can as opposed to a pump mist. I find that the application's a lot more even. It's easier to get a nice even layer on the skin, whereas like I use the Super Goop Refresh whatever setting um, mist, setting spray. And because it's a pump, sometimes it'd be like, and I just get this like drippy layer and then there goes all my BB cushion off with it. And the Super Goop one smelled horribly of alcohol. I know setting sprays are always going to be alcohol based, but this, even though it smells like bug spray, for some reason, for me, that's a more natural, like a more approachable scent than whatever was going on with the Super Goop setting spray that I was using. So a lot of people really dislike it. It's one of the products on Sephora that I see a lot of one star reviews, but I just set my expectations really low with this. And I understand that this is, is just a way to get SPF on your face. I'm not looking for skincare out of this. Um, I found that the finish it gives my makeup wasn't that terrible. It's more of, I found it to be slightly more mattifying because I use a really like radiance, like wet BB cushion. Some people say it leaves them feeling greasy, um, but I don't know for what it did and what the purpose of is just protecting my skin from sun exposure, it does a lot better than most. So it's it's full of compromises, but that's kind of the game you play when you're trying to reapply sunscreen without negatively impacting your makeup. So uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll do a more in-depth review and I'll probably even do an application while I'm outside just so you guys can kind of see what it looks like afterwards and let you be the judge. But I'm okay with it. I'm not going to repurchase it because I'm doing my... D Bronzy and Starlit Glow combo now. So I can just go over that with a cream sunscreen and not really mess up the effect. Um, but for those of you that really want a, at least a sunscreen that's gonna evenly apply and not just be like blotchy and potentially leave you with exposed areas, that uh, this is one of the better ones that I've seen. So there you go. That's all I've got for you um, today. Um, Feel free to like, subscribe, leave comments um, at AJK Beauty on Instagram, at um, or it's ajkbeauty.wordpress.com for my blog where you can see full in-depth reviews with links to the actual products. And then, um, yeah, I'd love to hear what some of your favorite AM routine products are because I'm always looking to change things up. You know I have my 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 stash back here to get through, but I'm always looking for um, for new products to try and review. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and stay glowing. Bye.